Hi everyone, this is Coach Leslie and I've got Miss Tess here. Miss Tess goes to Elite Dance here in Nolensville and she is helping us out today. She's in one of my classes called Tumbling for Dancers. And in this class, it is only, I only allow competitive dancers in the class. Um, and we really focus on skills that dancers need. Um, general tumbling classes are always great if you can't get in one of these classes if you're a dancer. And they will give you uh, skills that you can use that'll be useful for you. However, uh, the Tumbling for Dancers is a great class to learn things like um, all your basic tumbling, handstands, cartwheels, round offs, forward rolls, backward rolls, backhand springs, and on into tucks and stuff like that. We still do all that kind of thing. However, we really are focused on some of the stuff that we're going to do here today, like spiders, um, head springs, um, and just and stuff like that dancers need. You know, um, it's not always beneficial for a dancer to just throw a round off handspring in a dance. You know, you want to go cartwheel step in, back handspring step out, and um, aerials and front aerials and layout step outs and stuff like that. So there's a lot of elements that are different than a regular tumbling class. I started this program a few years ago. Um, well, gosh, a long time ago, actually. It's been darn near a decade. Um, because I kept having people ask me to do private lessons and I was running out of time. So I created a class that was just for them. You can find information about it on our website at summitsportcenter.com and you can look under tumbling and there's a section called tumbling for dancers. Also, any of these videos that we're doing Facebook live on, you can also pull them up on our website if you go under the events tab and you look under virtual content. There's tons of pre-recorded videos to keep you busy and having um, workout time to keep up your strength and um, endurance and flexibility and speed and agility and all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's also previously recorded um, Facebook Live videos. So if you miss any of them, you can always go back. All right, well, we're going to get started. I hope you guys all are with us. I kind of tried to give a little bit of just me sitting here talking for a minute so I can wait on everybody to join if they're not getting in right on time. So anyways, again, this is Tess and I really appreciate her coming in and we're going to start out with a little warm up. All right. So we're going to start out with 25 jumping jacks. Go ahead, Tess. Good. When you do your jumping jacks, you do want to make sure and make sure you're counting because I'm not. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're getting your arms all the way up and that your arms are straight. What we're looking for here is to warm up the muscles. And we need range of motion to do that. Plus it gets your cardio going. We gotta get those muscles warmed up before you stretch, before you do tumbling, dance, gymnastics, all that. Next is 20 squat jumps. So she's gonna go touch the floor and they're not frog jumps. Frog jumps, her bottom will be going all the way down. <clears throat> right now she's stopping at a 90 degree bend in her knee. Her chest is slightly forward, she's pushing through her toes, and her bottom is out. When she squats, she has most of her weight in her heels, and she's really warming up those legs and arms too at the same time. You should keep breathing the whole time during your warm up and stretches and tumbling. Okay, all right, now she's gonna do um, 14 side squats, and I say 14 because you wanna be even on each side, okay? So, ready? And one leg is straight, one leg is bent. She's touching the floor in front of her toe, or you can touch her toe either way. And she's, her back is flat. Her head is obviously forward because you can see her face. Okay, you don't want to be bent over during these. <clears throat> and we're really getting the um, inner thighs, the groin area. Active stretching. All right, and now we're going to do burpees. And if you don't mind facing that way for me so they can see you from the side, okay, you're going to tuck down and go out to plank and then back into tuck and jump. And she's going to do 10 of those. And you can speed up if you'd like. That's really good form. You always want form over <clears throat> quantity. So you can see she's speeding up now, but you always want to keep that form. Okay, so if you start losing your form, Slow it down. And she should be almost good and warmed up right now. 
Her heart rate should be up there, muscles warmed up. The last thing that we're gonna do to warm up the shoulders a little bit is five wide arm push-ups. And Tess has some pretty good push-ups. We practiced a little bit before she came. Not much though. She's pretty good anyway. Good job, Tess. All right, so we're gonna sit in a pike sit <clears throat> and we're gonna stretch our wrist. Okay, and she's gonna put her arms out in front of her like this and she's gonna spread and squeeze, spread and squeeze. And she's gonna do that 10 times. What this does, I think it's better than pushing on your wrist. Okay, it, um, pushing on your wrist is not a super effective stretch. Um, you really want active stretching before you um, do your tumbling. If you feel the need to push after this, that's okay. All right, now make a fist and go up and down, up and down. So she's flexing and pointing her wrist. She's keeping her arms straight. And again, we're doing 10 of these. She's keeping her arms straight to get only the wrist joint moving. When she's done with that, she's gonna turn her hands up like a hammer. And she's gonna go up and down, up and down like a hammer. What this actually does and what any of movement like this does is releases synovial fluid over your joints. It coats your joints. I like to think of it like, you know that commercial, all right, now we're gonna make a fist and we're gonna roll 10 in and 10 out. So roll your thumb in and then roll your thumb out. So there's a commercial, it's like Pepto-Bismol commercial and it, you drink the Pepto-Bismol and then it shows that coating the stomach. That's what I think about the synovial fluid coating the joints. I know it's kind of silly, but it helps you remember it. Bet you guys won't forget that. Okay, <clears throat> now she's gonna go reach up to the ceiling and go down and touch her toes five times. And then we're gonna hold for just a few seconds when she's done on the fifth one. And you're gonna to try to put your elbows on the floor. Ooh, good. Can you put your elbows on the floor? Almost, there we go, good job. Okay, <clears throat> now um, we're gonna flex and point our ankles. Kind of the same thing as the wrist, okay? So we're warming up those ankles and all the tendons and the joints and the muscles around it, okay? And we're gonna do five more. So flex, point, flex hard. Flex so hard that your feet come off the ground. I, I, you probably can't see it, but her feet are coming off the ground. <clears throat> All right, and then after you're done with that, she's gonna lay on her back. And you're gonna get our hands and feet set for a bridge. On the count of three, we're gonna push up to a bridge. One, two, three. And you can see that her chin is up. Okay, her chin is kind of to her chest. Her arms are locked out straight. Her legs are straight, her feet are together, and she's pushing her armpits over her wrist. Don't forget to breathe in your bridge. This is a perfect bridge position right now. Um, you wanna be stretching your shoulders, not necessarily your back. Okay, and come down. Thank you, Tess. Okay, and now let's do just a few tuck and rolls. And again, don't forget to breathe. Okay, two, and one more to make it three. And we're gonna do a few candlestick rolls. If we get to back extension rolls, those are gonna come in handy later, okay? So um, arms up and do like three candlestick rolls. Good, you can see she's clearly getting her legs all the way up and she's really trying to push those hips flat. She's almost there. Ready? One more, one more, get those hips flat. There we go, good job. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is front support and back support. Okay, since we're already sitting here, let's do back support first. So you notice her hands are close behind her bottom, her fingers are pointed toward her heels, her legs are out straight, squeezed and pointed, and on the count of three, we're gonna lift our bottom up to make our hips flat. One, two, three, and push up. Good. <clears throat> this is back support. We're gonna hold for five, four, three, two, one. And we're gonna flip it over to front support. Ready? And this is more than a plank, okay? What she's gonna do is make her back round up here and really make a bowl with her chest, bottom squeeze. Okay, so it's a little bit different than just like a push-up position or a plank. And we're gonna hold for five, four, three, two, one. All right, so <clears throat> now that our body's warmed up, um, we're gonna get into um, head springs, okay? I love teaching head springs. They are really fun to me. I didn't learn them until I was an adult, so. <laughs> 
when I started this program, I found out there were some things that I really need to know. Um, and Headsprings is one of them. So they are really fun to me. I love teaching them. I feel like I'm really good at breaking it down um, to where that, um, that you, you can get it pretty quickly. Okay. All right. So the first thing that you want to be pretty good at is a headstand. And the way that we do that is we're going to start off in what's called a tripod. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, put your hands on the ground and bend your knees and put your knees. You can see that her knees are really close to her elbows. Okay. She's going to put her head on the ground in front of her hands a little bit. And she's just going to use her body. Okay. She has equal weight in her hands and her head right now. You don't want all your weight in your head. Okay. And you want to keep breathing as you're doing this and just hold. See if you can balance. Good. And you can come down. Good. So when you do these, you don't want to tuck your chin to your chest. You want a nice flat back with a engaged core. And when I say engaged core, it doesn't mean you're like engaged to be married to your core. Okay. But you kind of should, okay. You should always be engaging your core. I don't care if I drop something and I, I go down to pick it up. You should be like, Oh, as long as I keep my core tight. Yeah. Okay. You should always be keeping your core tight. Tummy flat, belly tucked under. That doesn't mean sucking in. There's a difference between keeping your core tight and sucking in. I'm keeping my core tight right now and I can breathe. I can talk. I can do all the things I normally do. If you're sucking in, you can't, you can't breathe. You can't move around. So it's different. Basically, when I say keep your core tight, you're keeping your spine flat and hips tucked under, okay? But you're not in a round body shape. When you're in the headstand, you want your back flat, okay? So once you've mastered the tripod, what she's going to do is go on to a full headstand. And you can do this against a wall, okay? Just make sure um, that that's okay with your parents, okay? All right, so this time start on the tripod and just go in a tuck or a pike or a straddle and go all the way up to a headstand. Good, and you can take it slow. The straddle's the easiest way to go, okay? Thank you, good job. Okay, so once you're kind of a, a master at that, and when I say master, you should be able to hold it for at least 10 seconds um, where you're not struggling to hold it, okay? So um, I'm gonna ask you a question, and we didn't talk about this beforehand. What's the key to success? I remember this. It starts with an R. Yes, repetition. So at each phase, you want to have repetition, okay? At each phase, you want to do it over and over again until you can't fail at it. Then move on to the next phase. If you move on to the next phase too quickly, um, you'll probably end up having to go back to the phase in front of it, and that's okay too, okay? Sometimes you're like, I don't know if I'm ready for the next phase, and then you go on to it, and you fail, and you fail, and you fail, okay? So go back to the next phase, okay? This is phase one of head springs, okay? All right, phase two of head springs. Well, actually, that's kind of phase one is tripod. Phase two is a full headstand. Here's phase three, okay? So we do these in my class. We do these almost every class for warm-up. They're called handstand pop-ups. We're not going to go all the way up to handstand today, but we're going to do pike pop-ups all the way till we get our bottom up, okay, to where our feet are out, and we're just in a pike. We're not going to go all the way up to the full um, handstand, but we're just going to pop and pop and pop up to that pike position. Ready, Ted? See how her back is flat and her bottom is right in line. And if you fall over, that's okay. Your, her bottom is right in line with her shoulders and her wrists. And she went all the way up and that's okay too. It's probably hard for her not to go all the way up and we're on a rod floor, okay? Thank you, ma'am. And I'm talking uh, to give her a little bit of a breath in between to kind of give you some pointers um, as we move on. Now, um, next phase, okay, we are on phase four, I believe. Okay. So next phase is what we're going to do. I'm going to pull this mat out and you can use, um, couch cushions, um, uh, mattress, air mattress, um, something that your parents approve. You can use, um, a mat, a gymnastics mat. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a headstand in a pike position and she's going to fall flat on her back in the pike position. Okay. So it's kind of like handstand flat back, but we're going to be in a pike on a on our head and not our hands. Okay. All right. And she's just going to go nice and slow to a pike, and then kind of fall forward. Okay. And to make that happen, she's really she's pushing with her hands. She's keeping that core tight. Her spine flat and long. Okay. You got one more in you. Okay. She's going to do one more just to demonstrate it one more time. 
in the pipe and fall flat forward. Good. And that's where you want to land with your legs up like that, okay? Um, that's a little uh, step that I've added recently that's really, really helped people that were previously struggling with this. Um, that's a new step for me. So um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to use the wedge mat. Um, actually, nope, we have one more step before we do the full head spring, okay? This is not a super necessary step. It just helps you understand um, some of the uh, complexities at the ending of the head spring, okay? So what I'd like for her to do right now is a front limber, okay? She's going to go handstand to bridge and rock up or come right up away to her feet, okay? Take it away. That's okay, okay? Not everybody can, not everybody's gonna be able to do that on the first try. You wanna try again? Yeah. Okay. So um, this phase is just a little bit important to me because I want you to know how to come up from your bridge, okay? Good. Um, and if you, do, if you are unable to go handstand to bridge and then come up or do a front walkover, um, Tess actually can do a front aerial um, and a really great front walkover. Um, we just haven't done front limbers in a while, um, and they're just a little bit different. Um, I'll show you an exercise real quick with the front limber um, that I find very beneficial, especially if you have a wedge mat. What do I want you to do? And we did not talk about this previously. We talked about some things, not this, um, but it's good. Come on to this side of it. Um, so what you're going to do is face me, and you're going to do arms up, and you can do a back bend. Okay, so I'm going to help her do a back bend, and then you're just going to rock back up. Okay, so that's a good exercise if you're struggling with coming up from that front limber. Um, we'll go one more time. And you can go and you can rock one, two, and one more, and three. Okay, so you can rock up several times. Okay, so um, now um, I lost count of what phase we're on. That was maybe five. Okay, so I think we're on phase six. And we are ready to go. We are rocking and rolling. Now, I'm going to do a head spring real quick for you because they're fun. Um, but when you do your head spring, you can use um, your couch cushion for this. Um, you can use your air mattress, whatever you're using at home. You don't have to have a wedge. Um, but do make sure that you're on a soft, soft surface and, again, that your parents know what you're doing and that they're approving it. Okay? So um, when you do your um, head spring, you're going to start off, you can start off with your head on the ground or not on the ground. I prefer to start mine with my head not on the ground, okay? But you can start with your head on the ground. You're going to, you're going to pop your bottom up like you're doing a handstand pop-up. But again, you're going to be hands here and head on the mat. You're going to pop up to your pike position. And you're going to fall until you feel like, I'm going to fall. I'm not going to make it. Then you're going to drive your heels and pop up. Kind of like the front limber, okay? Here we go, and then Tess is gonna try for you too. Boom. <laughs> All right, so um, go ahead and try a few head springs with Tess. Woo, that was a good one. Good job. All right, do um, another one just like that. Good. Okay, and some of you at home might not be as successful, and that's okay if it's your first time doing it, that's all right. So um, one of the things that I like to teach is to land with straight legs, okay? Now, if you have choreography and you have to land like this or with bent knees here or something different, that's okay, that's choreography. I like to teach it this way. Um, it looks a little cleaner to me, but like I said, if you're in a group dance and, and if that's the choreography, that's how they want you to land, then land like that. However, it's harder to land like this. So um, have you ever tried to land with bent knees? Okay, well, let's see. She's going to try to land with bent knees just so you can see. Um, there you go. See, it's not too hard, okay? All right, so once you've mastered it on the wedge mat or a soft surface, then you can move to the floor. Have you ever done it on the floor? Woo! Today's the day. It looks so good, though. I don't think she's going to have an issue with it. <laughs> I tried it on the floor, and I can do it on the floor. If Tess does it, I'll do it. Okay. It's been a while since I've done it on the floor. <laughs> we shall see. Ah, 
Dang it, I gotta do it. Okay, well, here's my disclaimer, okay? When I upload the video called Countdown, keep in mind I've already done that today and I'm wearing bands. <laughs> excuses, excuses, right? All right, here we go. Whoa, Lord. Woo! <laughs> I really had no idea if I was going to make that or not. All right, give it up for yourselves. If you've gotten this far in the video, give it up. Thank you, Miss Tess. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is kip-ups. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on kip-ups. I love teaching kip-ups and head springs at the same time because they're a lot of life. Honestly, the end of your head spring is really a kip-up, okay? So how I like to do kip-ups, and again, you don't have to have a wedge mat. You can work on these on the floor. Um, actually coming up from a backdrop on the trampoline is a lot like a kip-up kip as well. So if you have a trampoline, um, lay on your back in that like upside down cow position and kind of bounce and you, then you can kind of try it there too, okay? Um, but if you have a wedge mat, this is a great drill. If you don't have a wedge mat, again, a softer surface is totally fine um, that's flat, okay? So she's gonna act like she's doing a backward roll. So you're gonna have pizza, magical pizza hands. <laughs> okay, and then once she gets up, <clears throat> stay in the pipe, lift your bottom up almost like a candle except you're gonna have your um, toes behind your head and not up there, okay? And then drive the heels up just like the end of the head spring. Oh, good, okay? And the kip up is about getting a rhythm, okay? And as I'm talking, you can just keep trying a few times um, and then we'll go from there. Good, that was a much better rhythm, okay? The first time she kind of was, was a little bit choppy rhythm, yeah. okay? That was a much better um, flow, okay? Um, lift the bottom up a little bit higher, and when you hip up, lift the belly button and push up just a little bit more. And up. There you go, okay? And it doesn't always have to be that, you know, big arch at the end. Again, it's choreography, okay? I like to see that um, because I want to know that you can come up with straight legs. But it's whatever floats your boat, okay? So um, if you have um, like a panel mat or something, it's cool to do it off of a, the end of a panel mat and then you move the panel mat down and eventually you're on the floor. Um, I like the wedge mat because as you roll up, it, it makes it harder for you um, so that when you get on the floor and you roll up that hard, um, you just keep with that same amount of um, uh, aggression driving with your legs and um, it's not so hard. So um, again, make sure you're having a soft surface. You wanna try it on the floor? Sure. Okay, sure. wanna do one more on the wedge mat? Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna try this on the floor. I can do them on the wedge mat, but I have not tried them on the floor. And I currently don't have a desire. I'm good with just being able to do a head spring. All right, ready? There you go, good. So you want to use um, your hands, okay? So you've got your magical pizza hands going back. I call them magical pizza hands because that's what we call them in preschool, okay? So when you roll back, you do want your whole, how I gauge how far I roll back is, is my whole hand on the floor? Is the back of my palm on the floor? This part of my hand, is that part of my hand on the floor? Then I can stop rolling. As I kip up, I'm gonna push up with my hands, okay? Um, when I do these, I really use a lot of hands, okay? Try it again. Push. There you go. I have a feeling she used her hands that time. <laughs> Was that the difference? Yeah. Good. Awesome. Okay. Um, really quickly, we're going to talk about back extension rolls. Really, really quickly. We've got just a few minutes left. Um, and if you guys have any questions or you're like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? I'm not getting it. Definitely show me a video. Um, you can um, email it to me uh, at leslie at summitsportcenter.com. You can tag me on Facebook. On Facebook, I am Flip Doc. Um, and on Instagram, I am Flip Doctor. So you can tag me um, in your video or send me a direct message of your video of really of almost anything. And I can be like, hey, you know, try this or try that. Um, some, I might say, depending on what skill it is, I might say, hey, probably need to wait until the gym opens back up, but you never know. Doesn't hurt to ask, okay? All right, really quickly, back extension roll progression. And I'm going to use a wedge mat, but again, 
You can use any mat or no mat. It is your preference. All right, so what we're going to start out with is a backward roll. Just do a tuck backward roll for me and stand up on your feet. And she's going to use those magic pizza hands. And you can roll all, over, oh. all the way over. There you go. Good. And this time you're going to do a pike backward roll. So keep okay. your legs straight and pike the whole time. Good. Good. Now, <clears throat> do one more of those wide pops. Okay. Lift your feet up straight. There you go. Good. And she really pushed up her hands that time. That was good. Okay. This time she's going to go, um, she's not going to bend her arms. Okay. You're going to keep your arms like this. Put your hands in toward your fingers like this. Okay. And she's going to go back to a backward pike roll. And then you're going to push out to front support. Good. See, our bottom's kind of up in the air a little bit. That's a very common, okay? And this is one of those things we didn't go over before this. I didn't know if we'd have time or not. So um, try to keep your arms straight. And when your hands land, really push up right away through that front support position. There you go. That was better. Okay? Good. Um, I'm going to help you this time. Okay. But I do want you to try to keep those arms straight. It okay. feels like you're not going to make it, but yeah. you will. Okay. okay. Ready? There we go. Perfect. Yay. Okay. So once you can do that, um, the next step is we're going to say bye-bye to the wedge mat. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. So the next step after that is um, to make sure you have a really good candlestick. We went over that in the beginning of class, so we're not going to go over it again. Um, the next step after that is to make sure you have a really good handstand, okay? okay. Tess has a pretty good handstand. I'm going to be here just in case. So lunge, lever, yes, good job, handstand. And that is a really nice handstand shape. Very, very good, okay? And come back down, okay? So how you can practice handstands at home, I'm going to come and turn this camera just a little bit here. So you can see, you can pretend that you're at your house and that this is a wall. Now, when you're doing this, you can go against the wall, okay, with um, facing, facing the wall. But I think it's a little bit more beneficial to turn around and not face the wall, okay? So back your bus up over here. Yeah, there you go. Good. And put your hands on the ground. And then you want to walk your feet up the wall. Then you want to walk your hands as close to the wall as you can get, okay? And what you want is for just your toes like this to be touching the wall and maybe your nose if, it, if you're at your house, okay, and squeeze your bottom. Good. And if you have a soft surface in front of you, you want to tuck your chin and roll out, okay? So, and that's also a really good handstand forward roll drill, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do now. She's going to go to a candlestick, and all I'm going to do is probably lightly just pull up on her feet, okay? The number one thing about a back extension roll is going to candlestick first. Okay, so face this way for me. Perfect. Now, I want you to just um, sit down for me and go to a candlestick. Okay, here's her candlestick. On the count of three, I'm going to pull her up to handstand. One, two, three. Good. See, I didn't even have to pull that hard, okay? And she was just from a candlestick. She wasn't creating any power or anything, okay? If you're tight and you create a little bit of power going up to that candlestick, you're going to make it, okay? Ready? Want to try one? Sure. There you go. And I did not help her that much. Okay. Now, quick drill. Okay. If you have a panel mat at home, um, you can go on the end of your panel mat. I forgot to grab a panel mat. <laughs> Sit on the end of that. Feet okay. down that way. Okay. What you want is lay down for me, but make sure your only your head is hanging off the mat. Okay. Now. You're going to sit up, and you're going to go to candlestick, and then you're going to do it. Good. Okay? Now, here's a little bit of an advanced drill, but it's fantastic. You put the panel mat up against the wall almost. Okay? Remember, your head is hanging off. Only your head. Ready? Candlestick. Good. And you know you're up against that flat wall. Okay? I'm going to move this out of the way so she can roll out. Last thing, and then we're going to stop the video. Um, lay down on your back for me. Now, you want to pretend my hand is at her eye level, okay? It's, you want to pretend there's a force field, a wall coming straight up from her eyes, okay? <clears throat> your feet cannot go past that force field, 
So pull your feet up. So see her feet can go here, but they can't go past it. If they go past it, she's just gonna do a backward roll, okay? Like we did earlier. It's gonna be a pike roll, okay? So if you're like this, and you're in this like upside down cow position is what I call it, okay? And you go like this and you go past that eye force field, you're just gonna do a backward roll. Or you're gonna be like arch when you go up to your handstand. After every pike is an arch in gymnastics and tumbling, okay? If you pike into something, you're gonna arch out of it. If you arch into something, chances are you're gonna pike out of it. You want that back flat all the time. Okay, let's do one more. Again, let's focus on that eye level. One, two, three. Good. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tess. Air high five. <laughs> okay, so um, next time I think we are talking about um, combinations. This is on Thursday, and I think the class is, oh, Lord, you'll have to check. I'm sorry. It's posted online. <laughs> um, but um, the class on Thursday is going to be combinations, aerial drills, and just a few, like, aerial tips. We're not going to really just work on aerial um, and then shoulder flexibility. That's a really important thing, shoulder flexibility, okay, um, for tumbling. And a lot of dancers don't have great shoulder flexibility um, because it's not something that you guys have to work on very often, okay? Um, thank you so much for being with us and hope you guys are staying safe and having fun. And we're trying to make that a little bit easier for you to continue to practice, okay? Thank you, bye.